the entrance antiphon. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins and asking God for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. O God, almighty King, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, of the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, Graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through, the reach, th through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of the Jesus Nazarene, rise up and walk. Then Peter took him by right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Your descendants, you descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. 
Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing them. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Clopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that, While he was with them at the table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised, and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the gospel with the disciples going to uh, Emmaus has always amazed me. Because when you read it, like he was, they, were, they had everything like on a silver platter right before them throughout this whole conversation with Jesus on the way. And yet they have not recognized him. 
yet even more so, they have spent three years with Jesus when he was talking at all times about his mission as the Messiah, when he was performing miracles, where he was healing the sick, when he was multiplying bread, when he was bringing people back to life. They have witnessed that, and yet they did not understand. Even more so, they say about the women going back to the tomb, seeing angels who are saying and testifying that he is risen, and yet they don't understand. So Jesus takes this misunderstanding as an opportunity. He takes this lack of understanding as a chance for a lesson. Because we should never be afraid of not understanding, we should never be afraid of not knowing, but we should always take it as an opportunity for getting to know more. That's what Jesus does with his disciples. And this is, there's no shame in saying, I don't understand. Because I don't understand the resurrection. I believe in it. I don't understand miracles. I know they happen, and I believe in them. I don't understand even how the universe works. We can measure the data, numbers. We can use science as a language to understand it. But we don't understand it entirely. There's always something new that surprises us. And there's no shame in saying, I don't understand. But there's a shame in not seeking understanding. So the disciples opened themselves up on the way so that Jesus can explain it to them. And that openness led them to the true openness of their eyes and seeing him who he was. Because there's no shame in not knowing and not understanding. But there's shame in not searching for the answers. They were searching for the answers, and they found them. They found them in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in Christ's power to make us whole, we pray, that God's people may proclaim the healing offered in the risen one. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that church and society may gratefully receive the gifts of persons with disabilities. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that those who beg may receive justice, mercy, and help. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that ministers of care may bring God's compassion and comfort to the sick. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that we may generously offer what we have received in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For intention of this Mass, this Mass is offered for Virginia Sorensen and for all intentions that we keep in our hearts. For all those intentions, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And that the dead may find welcome at heaven's beautiful gate, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us, God of freedom, and by Christ's resurrection bring us to wholeness. May we have courage to embrace the weakness that makes us human, and so glorify you through the risen one, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the divine work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And as I'll be receiving communion in the intention of this Mass and for intentions of all of you watching it at home, I encourage you to receive the spiritual communion by praying together with me the prayer of St. Alphonsus Liguri. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot re now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen. Communion Antiphon. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. And we will now pray uh, the next day, the following day of the Divine Mercy Novena, preparing ourselves for the celebration of the Divine Mercy Sunday. Today is the sixth day of the Novena. Today bring to me the meek and humble souls and the souls of little children and immerse them in my mercy. Most merciful Jesus, you yourself have said, learn from me for I am meek and humble of heart. Receive into the abode of your most compassionate heart all meek and humble souls and the souls of little children. These souls send all heaven into ecstasy and then they are the heavenly father's favorites. They are a sweet-smelling bouquet before the throne of God. God himself takes delight in their fragrance. These souls have a permanent abode in your most compassionate heart, O Jesus, and they unceasingly sing out a hymn of love and mercy. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon meek souls, upon humble souls, and upon little children who are enfolded in the abode which is the most compassionate heart of Jesus. These souls bear the closest resemblance to your Son. Their fragrance rises from the earth and reaches your very throne. Father of mercy and all of goodness, I beg you by the love you bear these souls and by the delight you take in them. Bless the whole world that all souls together may sing out the praises of your mercy for endless ages. Amen. 